Hello and welcome to this section of the Trig and Pre-Calculus Tutor. In this section we're going to talk about what we call the half angle identities. If you remember a few sections ago we had the double angle identities where you had two times an angle and you knew how to, to uh, have a simplification for that or, or a relation that, that works for that. Here we have the half angle. So instead of two times theta, here we have one half of theta basically, so half the angle, and we'll see that we have some identities here. Again, these are things that are used, definitely, but not as commonly as some of the first identities we learned in the course. So, uh, here we have the half angle identities, half angle identities. Okay, so the first one is going to be sine of theta over 2, so one half of an angle, and that's going to be equal, and I'll explain what this means in a minute, but plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of theta over 2. So what does the plus and minus mean? <clears throat> Basically, you need to choose, when you, when you have an angle here that, you, that you're evaluating, you need to choose whether you use the plus or the minus sign out in front of this radical here. And the way that you choose it is basically where this angle is in the, in the coordinate system. I mean, if you think about the, the unit circle here, angles that lie over here in the upper half plane, the sign is always positive, right? So any angles that lead to, to being in the upper half plane like this, you're going to choose the positive sign in front of this radical. But if you're messing around with angles that are in the lower half plane, you know, past pi and over into the bottom part here, the sign is negative. So you would choose the negative. So you choose the plus or minus based on where the angle is in the quadrant. This is really the only set of identities where you have to do this kind of thing. It's just one of those things you have to get used to. It's not that hard and I'll show you how to handle it in just a minute. The next one is cosine of one half theta or theta over two. And that's plus or minus Again, another radical. These are all going to have radicals. 1 plus cosine of theta over 2. Same kind of thing. When you are evaluating what sign to use, you look, you look at where your angle falls. Here, any angles that fall over here, where x is positive, you're going to have a positive number in front of the radical. Any angles that fall on the left-hand side over here, where x is negative, you're going to use that negative sign. And then finally, we have tangent theta over 2. And we have a couple of different choices here, like we do sometimes for tangent. Plus or minus square root, 1 minus cosine theta over 1 plus cosine theta. We also have a choice of 1 minus cosine theta over sine of theta. And we also have a final choice of sine of theta over 1 plus cosine of theta. So those are it. So for tangent, we have three choices. So what you have going on here is a situation where if you have, much like the double angle, where we had an angle and we're multiplying times 2, there was a nice simplification. Here we have an angle we're dividing by 2. We have a, a simple, I wouldn't really call it a simplification, but we have an identity. In some cases, it will be useful to make this substitution. It makes more sense, actually, to go the other direction. If you ever see something like this in an equation or in a, in a simplification or in any, anything, really, that has a radical 1 plus cosine theta over 2, you can keep it like this, but it might be simpler if you just transform it into something like this. And I think you can see how that kind of simplification could come in handy. So let's get a little bit of practice with these half angle identities. Let's express sine of 22 and a half degrees as an exact number. 